Great news, the Pac-12 has risen from the dead. Sort of. You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, the only daily national college hoop show out there. We're your hosts. This is Andy Patton. I'm Isaac Shade, and you're joining us at the place to get your college basketball content every single day. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen or watch, and we want to remind you that you can get every episode ad-free on Amazon Music. Special shout-out goes out to all you everydayers joining us and all the great members of the Locked On College Basketball Discord community. We're having some fun conversation today about the Pac-12 revival. You got to rise up from the dead just like a phoenix from the ashes. Andy, I don't know where that's all coming from. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Andy, it's all Pac-12 all the time today, as they made a surprise move to bring in four Mountain West schools. This was first reported on Wednesday evening by Yahoo's Ross Dellinger, and then very quickly it came to fruition on Thursday morning. So the whole show is dedicated to this today. We're going to talk about the details of it, what this means for the landscape of college athletics. Next segment, we're going to get into like Pac-12 is not done. They're going to be adding more. We're going to talk about who that might be. And then we're going to wrap up by looking at like, is the Pac-12 going to be a power conference again? What does this mean for other conferences that have been poached? And so on and so forth. So Andy Patton, my man, I know you've been writing about this today. I know you've had it swirling around in your brain. So why don't you just lay out the nitty gritty of this whole thing, just in case people aren't aware. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't blame people for not being aware this happened so fast the way that it came together. You know, I mean, I, I think we would we knew that the Pac-12 and the Mountain West, there was, something was going to happen. They'd had the scheduling agreement. It seemed obvious. I mean, as, as soon as the, the end of the Pac-12, when all the other schools all left, when the four corner schools went to the Big 12, when the Big 10 took when, when was the schools the that they did, like, yeah, we, we knew that something was going to come out of this, but the expectation through a lot of this and, and our good friend Spencer McLaughlin did a ton of reporting on this throughout the summer last year on Locked On Pac-12, which is now Locked On College Football, which we'll see if we get a Locked On Pac-12 back in the What's mix that? at some point here. I literally just tweeted him to ask him about that. Uh, He's going to bring it back. He can host (laughs) both, right? He's not a busy guy. (laughs) Anyway, we'd seen these, we kind of knew that whether it was going to be a merger, reverse merger, what what kind of might come out of this, but we'd heard uh, rumblings like late last week that the Mountain West and the Pac-12's kind of relationship had soured and that they were not going to continue their scheduling agreement from a football perspective after this upcoming season, which didn't necessarily indicate what was about to happen, but it indicated that they weren't super happy with each other. And then all of a sudden, Ross reports on Wednesday evening, hey, the the Pac-2, the Pac-12, they're going to recruit, they're going to add these programs from the Mountain West for specific teams, those teams being San Diego State, Boise State, Colorado State, and Fresno State. Yes, all four of them have the word state in their name, and no, none of them are actual states. That is a weird coincidence as they join Oregon State and Washington State, who are both actual states in the Pac-12 conference. Uh, but it, we saw that there was a report that, hey, they're, they're looking at adding these four schools. I thought it might be a week, maybe like three or four days at, at like the earliest. And yet I wake up, at seven something in the morning on the West coast. And it's already reported. It's already done. The Pac 12 has already announced, Hey, these four schools are joining. It's happening in 2026. They're going to be in the conference, a huge move for the conference. They choose instead of a merger or a reverse merger, which would have effectively been uh, all of the mountain West joining the Pac 12. uh, Instead of doing that, they opt to just poach four of the programs specifically. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, why we're not seeing somebody like a UNLV, for example, which feels like kind of the, the most obvious brand out of the Mountain West that did not get brought into the Pac-12. But what this means is that the Pac-12, instead of just merging where there's not a huge financial burden, they're going to pay a lot of money. Isaac, and I mean a lot of money money. in order to bring these four schools from the Mountain West into the Pac-12 with something like a hundred plus million dollars in totality 
Uh, I, we did the math here. Roughly $112 million is what it's going to cost the Pac-12 because they're going to pay a $17 million exit fee for each of the four schools. They're also going to pay somewhere between 10 to $12 million additionally for each school because of the previous scheduling agreement between the Pac-12 and the Mountain West. All told, something like $100 plus million plus the Pac-12 is paying to the Mountain West to add these four programs. Having said that, the Pac-12 was adamant, adamant that they wanted to keep their brand alive. They did not want to just merge with the Mountain West and have the brand disappear into nothingness. This is a 108 year storied history of the Pac-12 conference. They said, we wanna keep that. We wanna keep the money associated with the conference. We wanna keep the, the potentially keep the Pac-12 network. We'll see if that comes back into the picture at some point. They no, said, no. Dear goodness, no. <laughs> Probably not in the same way, but we'll see what happens there. But but the, the two schools said, we want to keep this brand. And if that means that we have to spend a bunch of money to add the brands that we want from the Mountain West, as opposed to, you know, with no disrespect, but they didn't want San Jose State. They didn't want Wyoming. They didn't want those teams. They said, we want these four. We're going to add them. We're going to get up to six. We're going to start there. And eventually they're going to have to get to eight. They have to be at eight minimum by July, 2026. That seems like a lot of time. It's not actually that much time, but that's kind of the step that they're at right now. Uh, having made this big move again, stunned a whole lot of people who were not expecting this. Uh, and now it's going to set off what I think is going to be a pretty significant domino effect over the next couple of months in college athletics. But probably more so at the FCS level, the group yes. of five level than, than what we've seen in the last little bit with so much FBS level movement. Andy, I've been trying to remember the timeline. Wasn't it not that long ago that we were talking about the, the actual Pac-12 bringing in San Diego State before it all mm -hmm. fell apart? Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. They were in conversations allegedly to add San Diego State and Boise State. Yeah. To the point where the Mountain West kind of mobilized at yeah. that time yeah. and prepared for what, what steps they want to take next, which I think means that the Mountain West is, is somewhat prepared for the steps that they want to take now that they know that they're losing those brands, as well as Fresno State, as well as Colorado State. And I'm sure they're feeling tenuous about whether they're going to be able to keep a hold on programs like UNLV. Uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're going to talk later in the show about what the Mountain West might do. But it's like the Mountain West may have some some schools at at, sim, at group of five level in the Sun Belt or in the American Athletic Conference that they may pursue, but those conferences might be trying to poach out of the Mountain West too. Like this thing could get real ugly for those conferences right now because the Mountain West doesn't have as much sway to bring some of those those brands in as they used to because they lost four of their biggest brands and they're not really standing yeah. on, on anything other than shaky ground right now. Oh man, it's going to be an arms race here. And Andy, here's the thing though. Let's stick to the Pac-12 of it all, man. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you and I both feel like it, I, I grieved the loss mm -hmm. of the Pac-12, yeah. not to the same level as you as a as a Pacific Coaster yeah. yourself, but as just someone who is in love with college athletics, man. Mm -hmm. I have grieved the loss of this thing. And so I, I think this is a great day yeah. for college sports. And I think July 1st, 2026 is mm -hmm. going to be a great day and we'll all feel a little warmer inside mm -hmm. on that day. I mean, I, you, you mentioned that, that long and storied history. It truly, truly would have been a bummer to lose all of that history, all of those financial resources that are there from the NCAA tournament units and mm -hmm. Rose Bowl monies and other things that are out there. Uh, Andy, you know, you got to think somewhere Bill Walton uh, <laughs> is out there smiling down on us today at this moment and saying, ah, ha, 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 and going on some long random soliloquy that ends up with <laughs> uh, talking about the Conference of Champions. So, at end of the day, man, this is great work by Commissioner Teresa Gould and, and her team and everyone there associated with the Pac-12 to just keep fighting for this thing and ultimately making it happen. Yes, it comes at the expense of another conference, but uh, man, this is this is good for college sports. Bill had a lot of connections in San Diego, so I'm sure he's thrilled to see San Diego State in the Pac-12. Uh, I, I can just hear some of his conversations about the beautiful mountains of Fort Collins, where Colorado State is located, and I'm sad he won't get to talk about the new Pac-12, or at least we won't get to hear it. But uh, yeah, I, I'm very happy to see this conference continue to survive as somebody who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, has lived here my entire life. Uh, it's It was sad to see it, see what happens to it, but I'm very happy to see that they're not dead. They're coming back and they're going to be, uh, they're going to bring it here. And and what I want to talk about now is what's what's next, because they went from two schools to six schools, but they need to be at eight. Everybody knows that. That's the rule. They have 22 months 
to get there. They don't want to take 22 months because they also want to negotiate a new media rights deal. There's a lot of factors at play. Media companies aren't going to buy a big package of Pac-12 games if they don't know what teams are going to be in the conference. So there is a mad dash about to happen. And we're going to talk about which teams they might be adding coming up in just a second. But first, folks, let's talk about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience, that's the formula for winning championships, and it's also what helps keep your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits to LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. Plus, with eBay's Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Or, folks, you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that W. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And eBay's Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find the quality professionals that are right for that role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And it's not just some job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't really actively searching for a new job, but they might just be open to that perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users aren't even looking at other job sites. So if you're not looking at LinkedIn, you're looking on the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn, who, by the way, just recently launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making that process even easier and quicker Way to go, LinkedIn. Thank you. So post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As Andy said, we've got to continue looking at what the Pac-12 is going to do because they've uh, gone from Pac-2 with Oregon State and Washington State, who, as a reminder right now, are in the WCC for two years. Mm -hmm. Um, They've added these four Mountain West schools, all the the state schools Andy was joking about. So we've got a Pac-6. The problem is that in order to be uh, elevated to the FBS level, to be uh, seen as to, to qualify as an FBS conference, the NCAA mandates a minimum of eight universities. Right now there are six, and so we've got to do it. As Andy said, it just it has to be in place by July 1, 2026. You know, it's just under 22 months away. Mm -hmm. That seems like a long time from now, but it's not. For example, you gotta negotiate a new media deal. And Andy, if I'm Fox or whoever it is, I'm not gonna enter into any agreement until I know who all is gonna be part of it. Yeah, and I think like one of the things that the Mountain West was struggling with and, and will continue to struggle with, depending on, on renegotiating a media deal for them, is that they're, a lot of their games are hard to watch. I don't know if you ran into this last year, Isaac, but when I tried to watch Mountain West basketball games last year, like every day I would you know, look at the schedule and be like, which, which basketball games am I going to watch tonight? I'd say, oh, Boise State's at Colorado State. That's a fun one at 7 o'clock tonight, and it's on the Mountain West Network. It's like, I don't, I'm not getting that. I'm not watching that. And so you're seeing – you know, that was the that was one of the big issues the Pac-12 ran into with the Pac-12 network, which we joked about earlier. And now the Mountain West doesn't have that. I'm curious if they're going to try to make a switch on that, how much of a factor that may have played in these schools like San Diego State and, and Boise State and the other states all leaving to join the Pac-12. But obviously the, the main question now is what else is the Pac-12 going to do? And I think one of the teams that has come up a lot that we talked about briefly already is UNLV and or Nevada Reno, adding those two, you get to eight. But again, I think the main question that a lot of people have right now is if the Pac-12 wanted UNLV and if they wanted Nevada Reno, wouldn't they have grabbed them when they grabbed these other four schools? Like the fact that they didn't add those schools makes me think either they didn't want them for whatever reason or they those schools didn't want to leave, which seems... Would be surprising. I suppose it's possible. I struggle to see why the Pac-12 wouldn't gobble up an opportunity to add UNLV specifically just because you get a a footprint in a massive 
growing media market in Las Vegas, the sports, I mean, the, the sports that have, have, has happened in Las Vegas in the last decade. I mean, they've added professional sports teams. They've become a hub for non-conference games and basketball. Uh, it, it's a, a tough, it's, it's odd to me that they didn't go grab a UNLV just beat the doors out of a big 12 team in Houston earlier uh, this season in football. And they're going to play Kansas in a couple of days. Like this is a, a football brand, a basketball brand, historically, at least in a huge media market. So a little surprised that UNLV wasn't a part of the conversation, but it doesn't I'm mean that they get, I'm, 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 just quickly, I'm hopeful we get that story at some point. Yeah. I want to know what's going on there. And it's yeah. possible they are still on the list. They just, the, the Pac-12 said, let's focus on these four right now, snap them up, and then we'll look eastward because there's no there's no other direction they can go. They're going to look east. They're going to look in the American Athletic Conference. They're going to look uh, potentially in the ACC and, and see if they can try to make a move there with their old partners, Stanford and Cal, maybe get SMU back. That is a, a much more difficult endeavor simply because Stanford, Cal, and SMU, they signed that grant grant of rights deal in the ACC. They are a part of that conference locked in until 2036. If teams could just willy-nilly leave the ACC, that would have happened. We know that because that's what Florida State and Clemson want to do, and they are struggling to be able to make that move. If something were to happen and the ACC were to fall apart, that is a huge kind of thing that is holding over a lot of college athletics right now if the ACC does crumble which we talk about that we hear that kind of as this hypothetical it seems unlikely that the conference is just going to fully implode having said that a lot of people said that for the years leading up to the Pac-12 and uh, that is in fact what happened so it could happen but it hasn't happened up to this point but I get 18 teams that's a it's a lot yeah exactly I get the sense that the and I think this was I, I'm I'm apologize if it was Ross's article or if it was somebody else's article. I believe I saw the phrase that the Pac-12 is keeping the seat warm for Stanford and Cal, effectively. Like, hey, you're welcome back. Uh, but again, they're not willingly going to leave the ACC or are not able to willingly leave the ACC. Uh, so that's kind of a, a a hinge that's just kind of sitting right now uh, and waiting. And so I, I'm curious if it's not Stanford, Cal, or SMU, if it's not UNLV or Nevada. I think you're looking pretty strongly in the American Athletic Conference for the rest of the additions here. Uh, a few non-AAC additions that could be in the equation. Uh, maybe they're going to try to make a strong push for BYU. I don't see why BYU would willingly leave the Big 12 yeah, at same. this point. I don't think the Pac-12 is going to offer more money than the Big 12. That would be very stunning. Uh, geographically, it makes more sense, but it's not like they're horribly out of place in the Big 12, especially when you consider that Utah and Colorado are still in the Big 12. So I don't think that's a likely outcome, but uh, you're, if you're the Pac-12, you're making that phone call at the very least to see if you can make a make a move there. But yeah, I think the majority of what's going to happen here is probably coming from the AAC at this point. It, it would be really funny though, if Colorado bounced right back uh, yeah. for the second, <laughs> you know, they were Big 12, Pac-12, yeah. Big 12, Pac-12. Just keep pinballing back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Andy, out of, you know, I, I, some of the AAC teams we've thought about are like Memphis or Tulane, <laughs> Tulsa, South Florida. Who, who out of that group? I, I guess there's two different ways to ask you this question. One, who would you be most interested in going after? And I think the second question is, who do you think is the most likely to go after? Yeah, I mean, this is a basketball podcast, so of course I'm going to mention Memphis. Uh, Memphis, which, by the way, very good football program. Not trying to take away from the success they've had on the on the gridiron this year. They're two and zero. They got a big game against Florida State, but they're clearly the best basketball brand out of this group as well. Even with the uh, stuff, <laughs> we'll we'll just we'll sum it up as stuff that's going on with Benny Hardaway right now uh, and that program. Uh, and geographically, I mean, none of these none of these teams are very close to the rest of the Pac-12. That's kind of part of the issue. But if you can bring in two brands that are somewhat close to each other geographically, again, it would be a really, really nice haul for the Pac-12 if they could get Stanford, Cal, SMU, and Memphis. That would be awesome. You're up to 10 now. You got two brands back in your conference geographically that makes sense. They're close to Fresno State. They're on the West Coast. You get SMU, so you have this huge footprint in Dallas. You get Memphis, so you have a footprint in Memphis and a quality brand. But if they can't get those three ACC schools, I think scooping up Memphis and then one of Tulane, Tulsa, or maybe South Florida. But I, I think South Florida is only going to happen if they also get – somebody else in that area. And I'm not sure who that would be. Are, do you feel confident about Florida Atlantic? Probably not as a Pac-12 school at this point. So I'm not really, you're not going to get Central Florida. They're not going to leave the Big 12 to go into this conference. That doesn't make sense for them. So that's kind of 
where I'm a little stuck on it. But if I had to pick just what I would most like to see, it's pretty clearly Memphis. And I think that would be a really fun Memphis and San Diego State squaring off in conference play. It sounds weird, but you know what? That also sounds really, really fun. Uh, I'd love to see that game. Yeah. Andy, let me pitch to you a, a wacky idea I hatched early Thursday morning. I know that Cal and Stanford can't get out of this grant of rights right now. There seems to be no loopholes. But let's just say that it happens and they become team seven and eight, or, or maybe it happens later down the road and, you know, teams nine and 10, whatever it is, mm-hmm. which would be incredible, right? Like, let's get yeah. them back over there. The ACC then backfills with UConn mm-hmm. because the timing hasn't been working out with the Big 12. It makes sense from more sense from a geographical standpoint yeah. for both entities. Boston College doesn't really have a geographical partner in the ACC. Syracuse is kind of the closest thing. But BC and UConn are like 90 minutes apart. Also, for the big for the ACC, that would wildly increase their basketball value. And we know how much nationally people have kind of dumped on the ACC in recent years. So that would be a really interesting just development. And then if, if you want to re-add uh, two more, I think Memphis would be a great look for the ACC if that happened, mm-hmm. or a Texas area school to partner with SMU. Because I think SMU is all in on the ACC yeah. over and above going to the Pac-12. And so that would just be a, a really interesting geographical thing if Cal and Stanford went to the Pac-12 somehow, getting out of the grant of rights, and then the ACC backfilled with UConn and like a Memphis or a Tulane or something. But I think yeah. Memphis would be better. Obviously, there's holes in this theory, Andy. Mm-hmm. There's the grant of rights. There's uh, Cal and Stanford probably aren't going to want to leave the ACC because there's probably going to be a higher payout yeah. from the ACC pending whatever media deal the Pac-12 gets all of that. And if, mm-hmm. um, but in this version of the Pac-12, they're probably the big dogs in yeah. in some regards and can can win, and that's got to be enticing. I don't yeah. know, it's wacky and it's wild, but I kind of like it. Did you imagine UConn, Duke, and North Carolina being the same conference? Come on, man. That's that would cool. be incredible. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. I love it. One thing we haven't talked about, I'll mention it briefly here before we move on, uh, is the, the Gonzaga of it all. Uh, Gonzaga has been in, in basically every conference realignment conversation over the last couple of years. Uh, they've been rumored with the Big 12. Most notably, they've been rumored with the Big East, especially if the Big 12 was able to land UConn. A lot of people thought that that's what the Big East would do to backfill it. Um, I don't see Gonzaga a, like – going into this new version of the Pac-12 uh, unless they feel like they really don't have any other options. They're very adamant and willing to wait for the Big 12, wait for the Big East, something of that nature. But if they're starting to feel the squeeze, they're starting to feel like those things aren't going to happen and they feel like the Pac-12 is going to eventually kind of get that that status as a power conference again. Maybe that's a direction they go. Now, to be clear, the Pac-12 is prioritizing getting up to eight football schools and the Gonzaga is not going to help them in that area. So that's not going to be a huge priority for them. But is there a reality down the line where the Pac-12 decides to add Gonzaga and maybe St. Mary's as basketball only schools? Maybe they go after some football only schools. Perhaps they even go with an FCS team like North Dakota State or South Dakota State. Yeah. Is it as wacky as yours? I don't know. Maybe it's a little less wacky, but I don't know how realistic it is. But I think it's something to keep an eye on of everybody wants Gonzaga right now, or at least is talking with Gonzaga in in some capacity. The Zags are going to be a little picky. The Pac-12 in this iteration is probably not super appealing, but I don't know. I wouldn't hate San Diego State, Colorado State, Boise State, Washington State. That's good geographic fit. They're good basketball programs for the most part. I think there's some intrigue there, and it's something to keep an eye on. Since this is a basketball podcast, we got to talk about the the main basketball team on the West Coast and, and, and their potential fit in this whole conversation. But Isaac, what we want to do now is talk a little bit about whether we think the Pac-12 is eventually going to get back to having that power conference status, as well as What's next for the Mountain West? They go from 11 teams to seven. We're talking about how the Pac-12 needs to get to eight. So too does the Mountain West. They got some moves that they need to make. And we're talking about what those moves might be coming up in just a second. But first, folks, let's talk about today's sponsor, Factor. You can fuel up with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you start, you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? 
With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every single week, you will always have new flavors to explore. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet, shrimp, and even blackened salmon. Head to factormeals.com slash lockedoncollege50 and use code lockedoncollege50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code lockedoncollege50 at factormeals.com slash lockedoncollege50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. All right, as to close out our show, it was Pac-12 all episode long, talking about their four new additions, Boise State, San Diego State, Fresno State, and Colorado State, all officially joining Washington State and Oregon State in the new Pac-6. They have until July of 2026 to get two more programs to bring them up to the Pac-8 at minimum in order to be a, a to, in order to qualify as a football conference. Uh, and, and what we want to do now is kind of talk about we already talked about which teams they might pursue to add to get to eight, but what happens when they do get to eight? Are they going to then get back to that status as a power conference? Are they going to get autonomous five status where they get more voting rights? Uh, are they going to be able to, to get a spot? I mean, college football playoffs, I know it's a basketball show, but that's certainly uh, an area where they want to be able to get an automatic bid desperately into the college football playoffs. I know that's a huge thing for them. And then the other question is, they're probably not going to stop at eight. I mean, they might temporarily stop at eight, but any conference, especially if they're vying for power conference status, I mean, the other power conferences all got 15 plus, like they're not going to want to be stuck at eight. So there's a lot of different conversations that can be spun off of this as we kind of learn more day by day here. But I think the main thing for, for the PAC 12 is what do they have to do to, to kind of be viewed again as a power conference? Andy, I think it's all going to be dependent on, I mean, because frankly, Oregon State and Washington State did don't really move the needle on their own, yeah. you know. And so it's not like you bring in these four Mountain West schools and they're really bringing those two down. It's like they're not all that dissimilar, if we're being mm -hmm. honest. So I think a lot of it is going to be dependent upon um, who the next two schools are that they bring in to bring it to full FBS status. And then I think it also is going to depend on what the these six and eventually eight schools are going to be able to do in the next two years to get themselves yeah. to that level, right? Like I'm sure that Oregon State and Washington State, you know, I know they lost a bunch of, uh, of players in the transfer portal because of going to the West Coast Conference. Mm -hmm. So so that's a factor. So, but I think outside of that, they've probably got all everything else still in place to get ready to go. But the mm -hmm. other four, man, they're going to have to up their game. And whoever these other two are, if they're not already FBS level schools, they're going to have to up their game as well. Mm -hmm. Andy, if it if it's me and I have an NCAA vote, I would not just automatically re-grant them power conference status, especially looking at it at this level. I, I would call this a mid-major conference. And, mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I don't think it's close yeah. um, with, with its current makeup. Um, and so I think... I think something that helps is adding more depth. And so to your point, I would not stop at eight. I would, you know, get there, like, let's just get to eight so that we can be an FBS conference, but then we got to add more and maybe, maybe more helps add to that level. But I, I think it's going to take, it's going to take some big yeoman's work, some farm strength to get back to the, uh, to that um, power conference level. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see how much money some of these media deal media companies are willing to invest in the Pac-12, uh, knowing that they're there. It's still a, a well-known brand. Uh, there is still a large fan base for both Washington State and Oregon State that we know that, and, and they're bringing in uh, programs that have quality fan bases as well. Boise State is always a huge fan base. Same with San Diego State. Uh, but but yeah, I think you're right that the teams from a football and a basketball perspective aren't necessarily bringing a, 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 the prestige that you typically see with power conference programs. And I'm, I'm very interested to see, because even the, the other teams that we're talking about them potentially adding, uh, Memphis, a Tulane, a, a, a Tulsa, you know, somebody like that, like those those teams aren't really bringing that either. So I think that's where it's in, like, do you go, do you, do you get 
schools that are our bigger schools or more academically rigorous schools. That's what kind of was the downfall of the Pac-12 in the first place. Are they willing to like, oh, we, you know, instead of adding, you know, so-and-so school, let's go get Rice because Rice is a big academic school. Like if Rice isn't moving the needle from a sports perspective, I don't think you want to go do that, even if it gets you a, a footprint in Houston. So I'm, I'm very interested in, in kind of how the media companies are going to pursue the Pac-12 and how interested they're going to be, as well as how they're going to be, how this conference is going to be viewed just kind of from a national perspective and from the perspective of the other power conferences. Because right now, I agree, they're not there. And, and I, I really like these six schools. And I, we didn't even really talk about this, but like just looking at these six schools all together in a basketball conference is pretty fun. I mean, I think San Diego State's pretty clearly your favorite at this point. Uh, obviously, you know, this isn't going to be a reality until 2026 and trying to project how basketball teams are going to look in 2026 in the transfer portal era is just pointless. There's no real reason to do it, but San Diego State, Boise State are probably the two biggest basketball brands that you're adding. Colorado State uh, is also a, a quality basketball brand. Fresno State's kind of the only one that's not so great there. But it's going to be interesting to kind of see how this conference gets viewed and evaluated and, and what steps they can take to, to kind of put themselves back in that conversation. If if they can, I don't think anybody's expecting it to be a, oh, in three years from now, the Pac-12 is going to be on the same level as the other power conferences. Like nobody's expecting that, but what can they do to get there? And is it as simple as like, you know, flushing those those new programs with money and hoping that that, that they can rebuild their programs and and reach that threshold or is there kind of something like are they just keeping their fingers crossed that the ACC falls apart and then get some of their bigger brands back because that might be the easiest path for the Pac-12 to get back into that conversation and and to that point will they try to re, you know you talked about re-upping on the academic uh, mm -hmm. prestige will yeah. they try to do that with their Olympic sports prestige which was yeah. such a staple of like Stanford I, you, you obviously think of as a, the prime example of that yeah. and we got to very very quickly turn to the Mountain West and where they go from here mm -hmm. um, because I gosh what a blow for this yeah. conference at the basketball level literally just two years ago they broke through a, a glass ceiling getting to the Elite mm -hmm. Eight for the last time San Diego State and all the way to the national championship game and so, I mean, in many ways, man, this is a massive bummer for this conference who, you know, has become right up there at, at the top mid-major level just behind the power conferences. Mm -hmm. And then you lose multiple of these schools that, that have been tent pegs here. Yeah. And so, Andy, this is going to be difficult. Obviously, they're they've, they're going to have to target some schools. What what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think the unfortunate thing for the Mountain West right now is that anybody that they want to target who's like at the top of the Mountain West list is almost certainly also on the Pac-12's list. Yes, I think that's exactly. that's what sucks for the Mountain West is like I'm sure their commissioner Gloria Navarez wants to put in a phone call at Memphis right now. And at Tulane, and at Tulsa, and at, well, it's already happened. I guarantee yeah, you, it's already yeah. happened. But again, if I'm those schools, I'm saying, well, I would like to wait and figure out if we're going to get inv invited into the Pac-12, which just stole four of your biggest brands. Right. And and those schools should do that. I mean, I unless I'm unless the Pac-12 has definitively told me no, we are not going to extend an invite to you. I would not accept an invitation to the Mountain West right now. I just wouldn't. And I think that that's going to be an unfortunate hurdle, a significant hurdle that the Mountain West is going to have to overcome. If the if the Pac-12 goes out and adds Memphis and, you know, maybe they, they, they grab UNLV again and they add Memphis and they add Tulane and Tulsa and they call it good, then if you're the Mountain West, you say, okay, let's go get Rice. Let's go get, I think New Mexico State and UTEP are two programs that are very high on the Mountain West list that are unlikely to be pursued by the Pac-12. New Mexico State makes a ton of sense because they already have New Mexico. Get the two in-state schools, let that rivalry just cook. Uh, UTEP has been connected to the Mountain West for a long time. They're in the Conference USA. I think that makes sense, even though they haven't been all that great as a football or basketball program. I think if you're the Mountain West, you want to get a footprint in Texas, you go out, you get UTEP. Maybe you do go after Rice. Maybe you do go after, I mean, Tarleton State or Sam Houston State. They're not super sexy brands, super well-known programs, but they're rising teams in the state of Texas, which I think if you're the Mountain West, that's about as good as you can get right now, knowing that any other bigger brands that you're pursuing are probably also being pursued by the Pac-12. Oh, Andy, it's a mess. We're going to have to keep our eyes on it. Yep. Uh, I'm all in, like, I wish it could happen. Get Grand Canyon, but I know we were talking about that. Or like at the <laughs> basketball level, That'd be that fun. makes That'd be super fun. And, uh, but gosh, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, folks, lots more to come on this story and much more. We were planning initially 
to do our A-10 conference preview show today. Mm -hmm. And then we learned the Big East was releasing their schedules today. So we were going to do that. And then this happened. So it just all got scrapped. So we'll push Big East schedule stuff to Monday. So be on the lookout for that. If you haven't subscribed to the show already on audio and video, make sure to do that. So that you don't miss a second of Locked On College Basketball. If you're not in our Discord, man, you need to come join us because we're having great college basketball conversations there all the time. It's ramping up, baby, because we are about just over seven weeks away from the tip of the season. It's free to join. The link is in the show notes. As always, apologies to the lawyer family. And today, apologies to the Mountain West Conference. You got ravaged. <laughs> uh, let's go Wildcats. And until Monday. Peace.